Hello fellow developers welcome back to the tech rack sheet i am amit and today is the fourth episode of our python series in today's python series we are going to learn about various data structures which are available directly or indirectly in python Okay, but before that, I think we'll be needing one tool that you can install using this pip command pip and then install. You, need, you gotta do notebook. So we are going to install Jupyter Notebook. That's the tool. Uh, this will enable us to interactively write some Python codes, and that's it. So simply here, I'll just create a file. Let me just provide a name fundamentals dot the extension of python ipython notebook is ipynb so interactive python notebook and once you create this file you will see all these cells so here we can do all our python stuffs maybe we can simply put one plus two i know this is very silly and trivial but it will provide you some output so the very first thing i'll just simply recap some of the things that we already did in the previous lecture so there are a couple of operators maybe five times uh, six it should provide me 30. so i'm simply doing shift and enter pro for this output quick output but if you simply press enter then it will just go to the next line so that is the shortcut key other than that we already have seen that 15 divided by 3 will give me 5.0 but if we do 15 float division by 3 and it will provide me 5 so this is a float value and this is giving me a 5 which is integer value then we had done exponentiation like 2 times 4 which should be 16 and it is indeed 16 then we have done modulus so maybe 10 modulus 2 it should be 0 because yeah it, uh, the remainder should be 0 if we do 13 modulus 2 then it should give me 1 because it is not completely divisible by 2 cool also we had seen some brackets and expressions in the last video and i'm not going into that variables if we want to declare variables we can declare variables something like that like name of uh, the variable equal to some name so that's how we declare variables and now if we just see name of variable so it provides me the value sum name there are three ways we can provide a string or create a string in python one is single quotation so let me just take str val equal to a single quotation string value this is one string then we can have maybe string value 2 and uh, we can have this using double quotation then in third thing what we can give this is mostly used for doc string we can provide take three quotes and then write some docs for the function so in these three ways we can declare strings so we can have if we want to see the values maybe a string val and then string val2 and then doc string okay so we have to provide it separately this is a double quote and the string val the very first function sorry the very first variable we had given the name was this so string val so in these three ways we declare strings uh, just uh, before we going to the very detailed structured different various other data structures like list or dictionaries i'll just simply put some print statements which will be fundamentally essential 
for later stages or in general in python in general we can simply provide hey this is python and it prints that is not an issue now if we want to print a value maybe we have stored some values in two variables maybe let's put some number uh, let me put the number as 17 and then we can have a name name as uh, my name could be Amit and I want to print these two values like maybe my number is uh, like I want to print the num and my name is name see it doesn't print that way so if we want to do that it will simply print the string but if we want to format that we can format that using some structured thing we can have these like blank thing we can format using these and we can simply provide dot format for the string actually format and then we can provide the values like num and name and if we do that so it is now printing the number as well as the name in a different way also you can do this so i simply copy this paste it here we can provide one and then two just for properly segregating which one we want to have one and two one should be my number and two should be my name so that's how if you do that it gives me the output 17 and amit but if we just simply modify like one should be two and then two should be one then it alters so this is something like key value pair like one is assigned with name and two is assigned with num all right so the interesting part of python data structure are lists so what are list lists are you can think of this as arrays but this is not exactly array arrays have only one data type stored in each of the indices but uh, in case of lists we can have multiple or different various types of data data types in a single list we can just simply define lists like this with square braces so you can put a name maybe virat and then rohit and shami so this is a list then what we can also do in a list we can put this virat and then rohit inside the list in the second index so since the index of python list starts from zero so this is the zero then this is first and this is the second index. in, in the second index we can provide another list this can contain maybe ashwin all of a sudden i'm just um, thinking of indian player's name siraj this is also another list but one thing you have to see see at the zeroth index the data type is string at the second index the data type has become another list so if we just want to check what exactly is the data type we can store this as my list as a variable and now we can check the type type of my list and this is list so if we just want to check type of my list zeroth element zeroth element means i should be getting virat so it should be a string so this is a string but in case of the second index my list and if we just put two it should be a list yeah it is a list so this is the clear difference between a list and array arrays can contain same type of data in each index but in case of python list it can contain various types of data
in list you can also have numbers like this is a number then i can put my name as a at the first index i can put some other thing maybe suraj at the second index and at the third index i can put another list it can contain number as well as some name and that and that is totally fine so let us now come back to some of the list methods which will be really helpful in data stage so we have already got this list which is my list and if i want to add something at the, maybe at the end of something we can do that also so we have got this my list and here there is this method append we can append some value we can append the value of maybe kuldeep and if we just check my list now see the value is added at the end so that's how we can append something we can append something at a particular index also how can we do that so my list dot insert and i can provide the the first argument as index at which index i want to provide or append something so let me just provide at the second index or maybe first index and just simply write a name maybe hardik see now my list has become this so hardik is added at the first index so zero and the first index so we can insert values in list like that now come to deleting if we want to delete something we can do by maybe popping something my list dot pop and index is we can provide the index as minus one minus one is negatively starting from the end index so minus one is kuldeep minus two is this one this list then minus three is rohit and that's so if we do not provide anything by default it takes minus one as the default value and if i will just simply print my list or just see the output then see kuldeep is deleted or popped from my list we can delete values from this list using a del keyword so what we can do we can simply write del then my list and we can have the the index we can provide maybe if we want to delete hardik and rohit we can simply provide from which index 1 2 3 it has deleted hardik and rohit so why i provided 3 because it goes not till the 3 it goes just before that index so if i just provide 3 it will go to 1 and 2 it will delete 1 and 2 if i would provide 2 then it will simply delete only one okay so that's how delete works okay all right we have got this particular list fruit basket now if you want to check how we can have some subset of this list so we can do this type of things fruit basket and Uh, let's imagine we just want to get this sublist from orange to guava so we can do from first index so it is orange and we can go until 1 2 3 4 4 so we can simply provide this 1 then 4 so by just providing this colon in between we can have this orange lemon and guava it doesn't modify anything it simply returns this value so if we just want to have like sub list maybe we can grab that like this 1 2 4 and my sub list has now become this smaller list the initial list is still in place we can do some other stuffs like fruit basket dot count maybe and i want to count how many times my lemon is there three times 1 2 and 3 we can do that also how many times my lemon is occurring in the list if we want to simply get each and every index from this second index from lemon up till the end so how can you get that we can get that by this we are not providing anything 
for the second index or the end index it simply just provides you that in the other way around what we can do fruit basket if we just simply want to have the last item we can have this so my last item item would be lemon it is lemon if we want to do some other stuff also so from the end i want to give something i want to get something minus 3 to minus 1 so minus 3 is my minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 it takes orange and then minus 2 lemon so each and every time if i just provide end index it doesn't take the end index it goes until the end index so before the end index it will stop now if we want to access some values by index and we want to modify that that also we can do. maybe fruit basket and i want to mo modify this first index or zero index not first index zero index to apple i do not want lemon i am simply modifying that to apple and after modification this is the value apple has been modified so initially it was lemon and now it has got apple at the zero index that's how we can modify it okay next up i can show you one more data structure which is a uh, dictionary so a dictionary is a key value pair you can think of this as has maps if you are familiar with that term or you can simply think of this as a what do you call it key value pairs so my dictionary and dictionary is created like that with the curly braces so square brackets are used to create lists and curly braces are used to create sets and dictionaries now i have to provide some key value pairs mean key 1 and the value should be also 1 separated by a colon value 1 the value can be a number also i am just providing here a string but that doesn't mean the value has always has to be a string it can be a number also key 2 and i can provide some value too. if i just print my dictionary it gives me the key value pair i can simply show you the type also if you just want to see that type of my dictionary this is the dict a dictionary how can we have access the value that is the fundamental question that has to be coming in our mind how do i access the value so my dictionary and then this we can provide key 1 or key 2 see value 1 came the second value we can just provide key to it gives me the value to so that's how we can simply access the values if you want to modify some values that also you can do my dictionary and then the key one and this value should be new value maybe and if i just show you my dictionary see our value is new value the key one value has modified to new value next up we can just have tuples these are simply numbers or values separated by commas so my tuple this variable we can just provide maybe 1 comma 2 comma 3 this is a tuple and if i just see type of my tuple it should provide me tuple and it is if you want to access tuple values we can do my tuple then zeroth index for the first value my tuple and then second index for the value 3 so that's how tuple values can be accessed cool next up that we can so is um, sets so what are sets sets are data structures that can contain 
unique values so if we just want to see my set this is also defined using curly braces but the dif distinction is we have to provide values like lists and not like key value pairs so if we just provide 2 comma 2 comma 3 comma 5 comma 6 comma 6 comma 8 comma 2 comma 4 and i want to see first i'll check what is my type my set so it is providing me the set and now if i just want to check what is the exact value of my set so my set see we already have provided two to some different values like two three times and six maybe two times but it is only storing unique values even though i have provided two multiple times it is only considering two once i have provided six two times it is only considering six for one time so if we just simply need to check what are unique values in some lists or somewhere then set is the best thing and it does in order one operation very quick all right so next up we can provide some of the comparison operators 20 is it greater than is it greater than 30 it should definitely be false so it provides me false so whether my 15 is less than 19 it should be true and it is true is one greater or equal to one it should be true and yes it is true is one is less or equal to four yeah of course it is true is one equal to one i mean i know this seems very trivial but in the world of programming this has always has to be checked this has. now if i just simply want to check hi is it equal to by no it of course not hi is it equal to help of course not okay my bad i've just provided three okay is hi equal to hello no in the world of programming you can't say hi is equal to hello no it's not next up we can show you some logic operators this is where things get interesting because uh, here comes the boolean algebra or thing so one is greater than two and is two less than three tell me in the comments what should be the value so one is greater than two this is false and two is less than three this is true so false and true ideally it should be false yeah it's false same thing let me just provide it with some or value or either or either this is true or this is true so that's why the or or is there and this is true now simply just do this one or two or Four equal to equal to four. What should be this? Take some time and just guess. One equal to equal to two is false. Then or two equal to equal to two three is false. Or four. But four equal to equal to four is true. So the value should be true. And it is. Now just let me just have some conditions which are kind of really important cool so in case of if if we have one less than two do something print yes and it's yes if one is greater than two if one is greater than two do something maybe print first if not what we can have elif or maybe just provide else print second it is printing second because one is not greater than two so it is not going into this condition it is simply going into the else condition now you can provide some 
if one equal to equal to two then print first we are just simply want to check which condition it is going into then else a leaf three equal to equal to three point second else if it is also not true then find finally we'll go to the last statement cool so it is going into the second because three is equal to equal to three cool that's how if else if and uh, else condition is written so that is simply conditional next up what we can work with is for loops so in the world of programming we have to do a lot of repetitive work and for that purpose loops are really time saver resource saver and whatnot so let me just uh, create a list maybe sequence one two uh, it should be comma separated three four five and six and what do we want to do we simply want to print from one to six so what we can do for i in sequence print i so i should be one two three four five six and all and whatnot so see it is printing one to six as simple as that now if i just want to print something else not the ith value we can put something yep see it prints yep six times one more thing that we can do instead of this we can just put any other variable maybe num or number and we can add this num num plus num and see it is adding these two numbers 1 plus 1 2 2 plus 2 4 3 plus 3 6 and so on see that's how we can write for loops next up what we can see we can see some while loops so for writing while loops what we can do we can take a variable with a i equal to 1 then while if i is less than 5 then please uh, go into this loop and print the value of i plus 1 and then increase the value i equal to i plus 1 and it prints till 5 because when it is 4 it prints i plus 1 which is 4 plus 1 that is 5 so it prints 2 before 5 so that's how while loops are written the next stuff is range range is a function which returns some range type of variables range type of values actually my bad so range 5 will simply return your range from 0 to 5 range um, 25 to 30 will return you value from 25 to 30 now if i just simply want to provide or put for for loop for i in range maybe 10 or just 6 it's a good number and i just want to print i see it will print 0 1 2 3 4 5 so in case of range or in case of the for loop it runs until 6 now if we just simply provide for i in range i is a variable you have to remember that and i just want to print values from 10 to 16 and i'll just provide 17 because it will go up till 16 and doesn't take and uh, will not and won't uh, it will go up till 16 and will not touch 17 then colon and i can print maybe i so it will print one two three four five i mean 10 to 16 so that is range if we want to create a list out of it we can simply do that list and then for or maybe range 5 so it will create you a list 0 1 2 3 4 next up is the list comprehension which is really important and most probably the most descriptive part of today's series or today's video
so if you have a list like this x equal to 1 2 3 4 5 and if we just want to create that using range we can create that but from this particular list if we want to print something like that maybe print okay so for i in x print i star star 2 it will print 149 16 25 which is the square of all the elements and i just want to have that as a list how can we do that so we can simply create a list using the square bracket then item or i star star 2 for i in and that's it it provides me a list with this all these values this i is the variable for this for loop and x is the list that we already had there are a couple of more things that we can do we can provide some conditionals also so for that we can maybe just uh, add some more values maybe for this x value we can just add some more values maybe minus 2 minus 3 and if i just want to take only the positive values and not anything not the negative values that also can be so item or i star star 2 for i in x if x is greater than 0 cool can you do that Destroying some error. Ah, this would be I if I cool. See 149 16 25. So it is not taking any negative values. But if we don't do that and simply provide this without this condition, it will give me all the outputs, all the values actually. See, it gives me 4 and 9 also, which is minus 2 square and minus 3 square. Cool. Now, for what we can do with uh, maybe we can create a tuple from this. So, x and y for i, okay, for i and j maybe because x is already the name of the list so for i in x then for y j in again x and it gives me this tuple so it will simply do all the values so one two three 1 1 1 2 1 3 1 4 and all those values so it is simply nested we can provide some conditions here also if we just provide if i i equal to equal to j and then it is limited to only the diagonal values i mean if you, if you can think of y i and j as uh, matrix elements then i equal to equal to j is the diagonal values so that's how least comprehension work now one more thing that is pretty important that i have to tell you is looping through dictionaries why this is important because in many scenarios in our programming we have to loop through this so how can you loop through that so let's just my dictionary and uh, i think we already have this value my dictionary yeah we have that q1 and q2 let me just for key and value kv in my dictionary dot items and then you can simply print the key values print k and v we can separate using a comma okay i just provided this dot by mistake 
say key one new value key two value two so that's how we can loop through dictionaries few sets of addresses we can just go ahead and most probably this would be the last thing that we'll be saying so alpha set maybe we have taken alpha alphabets alpha sets and if we just simply put this set and then um, my name amit rakshit it creates a set so it has got some values like a h i k m r s t and this on empty space so here i can just have one more set name set maybe name equal to set and my name since my name contains all the elements so if i just say name i my name contains all the unique elements so a i m t so now what we can do we can have set operations like alpha sets which is kind of the super set minus name and it will give me all the values which are there in the super set or the bigger set and not on the small set so it simply subtracts that in the world of sets this is how things work we can have intersection so we can have alpha sets and intersection this is the intersection operator so all the common elements from these two sets will be there so a i m t are the common elements so this is the value now let me just take another value maybe other set and if i just want to say say this can contain some values like z k l y p this is also one set now if i just say okay alpha set and other set this will be null set because no values are common in these two sets but what if we want to union that we can do that also like in the world of sets we have intersection operation union operation so how can you do that so alpha sets and this is the or other set so it simply unions both the sets and gives me the value so these are some of the sets operation in case in many cases we can take the advantage of this all right for today's video this is it and if you have enjoyed the video then do like the video share it across your friends and uh, if you want to get some more videos like they are then subscribe to the channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon thank you very much